so that folks who weren't able to join us tonight could go back and watch it or so that you could watch it yourself at a later time. Um, and one other thing, um, we do have a very quick intro survey that if you're able to, you can go ahead and take and that just gives me and Sarah a bit more of an idea of who is uh, in the virtual room with us today as we're doing our presentation. This is one of the things that as we've done a bunch of presentations, we've learned that anything that we can do to kind of keep that human connection between us and the people that we're presenting to is really helpful. So this is one, one of those kinds of tools. Um, if you're able to do that, that would be great. Um, and then one last thing, just to kind of get your minds prepared for this, uh, because of the way that our district has Google Classroom set up, um, we can't actually invite teachers from other districts into our, into our uh, district created Google Classrooms. Uh, so I have another domain that I'm able to use. Uh, the downside is that you're only able to join that with a personal Gmail account. So if you have a personal Gmail account, um, you can use that to join our Google Classroom and you'll be able to kind of keep uh, up with us and go through the assignments and the things like that during this hour. If you don't have a personal Google account, that's totally fine. Uh, we'll be sharing screens back and forth between my screen and Sarah's so you can see what the student perspective looks like during that whole time and you can follow along that way instead as well. And um, yeah, and so that, that slide just kind of explains that. Um, so if there are questions about that, you could put that in the chat. Uh, I'll be primarily running the presentations tonight while Sarah works on uh, answering questions in the chat and helping folks out there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, pass it back to you for a minute, Geraldine, to just talk about MSEA and the things that we're doing, and then we'll go into things. Yes, thank you, Bill. Um, let me allow these two people to go in. I just saw. All right. Um, again, my name is Geraldine Naval, and I'm delighted to have you this afternoon. Again, if you just joined in, my primary role at MSCA is to support you by providing professional development on your needs, on things that are supporting you with your students. So I really enjoy that function of my job because it allows me to learn from you and also um, add some toolkits that we all can benefit from and in, um, improve our community. A second part of my role is to monitor and review educa educational policies and regulations. And by doing that, I'm better able to serve you and your students and also support you to make sure that the policies and regulations reflect what you need to be successful in the classroom or in your work site. So again, um, if you have any questions, my contact information is um, below. And this slide deck, as you have access to, will be available to you, so you can always reach back to me. Next slide. We're delighted to have this program. As you, um, if this is not your first MSCA webinar, we've been having these series for the last um, month and a half. And we've also been doing this in partnership with NEA and Michigan Education Association. And NEA's mission is to fulfill the promise of public education to prepare every educator to succeed in a diverse world. This is becoming ever so more important, especially as we see what's going on in our nation today. So we hope that you will get some resources to support your students. Um, I know most of you guys are probably in the last few days of school if you're not finished because different counties have different end dates. But it is wonderful that you have taken the time to put some more um, tools in your toolkit that you will benefit from as you open up the new school year. So we are thankful for the NEA partnership, and we know that this program is a member benefit to you. So we're delighted that you're able to join us this evening. And I'll let you be in the hands of um, Sarah and Bill. Great, thank you. So just a couple of brief norms as we get started tonight. Um, you've probably been on 10 million Zoom slash Google Meet slash whatever kind of things in the last couple of months because of the situation that we're in right now. Um, but just a couple of quick things. Uh, everybody's muted already, so that's a really easy one. Um, if you do have a question, the easiest way to get that answered is to put it in the chat box. Um, Sarah, like I said, will be taking care of questions there. Um, and if you have information or other things to put in uh, the chat, that's great as well. Um, one thing you can do if you're comfortable is because we can't really read the room and see people's faces, um, if you're comfortable and you're able to turn on your video, that just gives us 
a way to kind of feel a little more connected and see if things that we're saying are actually landing with you. If you're not able to, if you're not comfortable doing that, that's totally fine. So uh, let's jump in and get started. Uh, my name is Bill Van Lu. I teach our technology and engineering program um, at one of the K-8 schools in Ann Arbor Public Schools. Uh, so this is my sixth year of teaching and we just finished our school year on Friday in Michigan uh, in Ann Arbor. So I just finished my 13th year of teaching after switching careers. Um, I've been using Google Classroom for a long time, since about 2014. And um, the educational technology realm is what I did my master's work in. So I'm really excited to be here and able to share with all of you tonight. And I am Sarah Van Lu. I'm waiting for, but there we go. <laughs> I'm Sarah Van Lu. Bill and I are husband and wife team. Will you please mute your microphone? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, Sorry, I'm just trying to get. Okay, I got him. <laughs> Bill and I are a husband and wife team. We're sitting next to each other. So when both of our mics are unmuted, I get a little feedback in my microphone or in my headphones rather. Um, there is a bit.ly file. I'll share that in the chat momentarily. Again, I know if you're just coming into the room, you might not have seen that. Um, so I'm also a technology and engineering teacher. I, I'm a STEAM educator. I have a bachelor's degree in accounting information systems, and then I changed careers again also and got my teaching certification in visual arts education. So I have K through 12 experience, but the last several years I have been working as a Project Lead the Way um, teacher in our district, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And I work primarily with elementary school, but my master's degree is in educational technology also from Michigan State. And there's a picture of Bill and me in the first picture, and that's my um, teacher leader cohort that I was with at Michigan State. Um, I have uh, I primarily work with Seesaw right now in elementary, but I have a lot of Google Classroom experience and I was an early adopter of Google Classroom as well. So I'm glad to be here with you and sharing with Bill and we're really happy that you're all here. Great. So um, just a little bit of context before we jump into the kind of nuts and bolts of what Google Classroom is all about and how to use it as a really effective tool. Um, it's worth thinking about why we use the tools that we do. Um, and so that question of why Google Classroom um, has a number of answers. You know, one thing is that it is usable on a really wide range of devices. Um, I'm not sure what districts in Maryland did, but in Michigan when we sort of it, like on a dime pivoted into remote learning as as COVID-19 closed things down. Um, we worked, you know, our IT department especially worked for the first couple weeks to get devices into kids hands. And even throughout the, the time that we were doing remote learning, that was a real concern in different buildings and in different households, making sure students had devices. So one thing that's really nice about Google Classroom is that it's um, able to be used on a phone or tablet or a computer, uh, a Chromebook, of course, and even some gaming systems. Um, and it's really well suited to be the hub of your classroom, as the name implies. Um, that can be for things like assignments, for announcements, uh, for links to material as an archive place and so on. Um, and it's really scalable, you know, so the, the sort of pitch for this session was that maybe you've started using Google Classroom a little bit and now you're ready to kind of take it to the next level and really dive into it. Um, that's one thing that's very nice about Classroom is you can use just a little tiny bit of it and it's useful um, or you can really dive deep and go um, and make it your, your sort of full central hub. Um, so it starts off very scalable. And then one last thing that's really nice is that it's reusable. Um, and so uh, a couple of years ago, I built out Google Classroom sites for all of our middle school technology and engineering elective classes. I was able to reuse those year after year for my own practice, but also to share those with the other teachers who teach those courses and have those as a template and a resource for them to reuse year after year. Um, and so it's really, it's really a, a great place to kind of put all of that stuff. Um, 
Another question that we found as we've been doing these sessions and presentations is why not just use things like Google Sheets or Google Forms or Google Docs and have students share those things with you. And there are places where you can absolutely do that. Um, but pretty quickly, it starts to get a little bit overwhelming having uh, students sharing multiple files with you all the time and kind of keeping on top of notifications and things like that. Um, Google Classroom really has a nice workflow that's built into it for assignments um, and, and things like that. You know, we also get a lot of questions at times about using Google Forms instead of turning in assignments in Google Classroom. Um, you can certainly do that, especially if you want to do automatically graded things, and we'll show an example of how to use um, some automatically graded quizzes in Google Classroom. But Forms kind of runs out of power where, um, where Classroom is all able to really allow you to give feedback very effectively, uh, to keep a nice trail of when students have turned things in and to give them credit um, for assignments for completing those things. And uh, the nice thing is that Classroom kind of means never having uh, students forget to share a Google Doc with you, which you've probably gone and run around on. Um, we'll take just one second to, um, to pause and see if there are any immediate questions and also for me to take a quick look at that survey. If you didn't see that already, um, the link is in the chat there, but I'm gonna take a quick look at that survey and just kind of see our responses and see just a little bit of who we're um, who we're working with tonight. Looks like only about six of you have responded, but that's okay. Looks like we've got a mix of elementary, middle school, and high school. And um, looks like about half of those are in that introductory uh, spot that this session is aimed at, where you've used Google Classroom a little bit. Um, got a, at least one beginner, a couple of beginners, and an intermediate person. So, so that's great. I think the course content will fit right in there with you. Um, with what you want to do and what you want to learn. Um, at any time, of course, if you've got a question, please put that in the chat. We will go through a pretty, um, a pretty comprehensive look at Classroom, and then we'll start to kind of peel some of those things back. And we're happy to stay for some questions afterwards, uh, but we've only got an hour session, so we want to really be cognizant of our time and respectful of your time as well. So we're going to kind of dive right back in and, and jump into things here. So this is the essentially the topics that we'll cover. We'll talk some about the stream. We'll talk some about using the classwork section of classroom and a little bit about people in grades. But we thought that it would be really useful to think about this from our teacher perspective and think about it in a little more task oriented way. So in other words, what are the sort of common things that you might want to do and get a, and get accomplished with Google Classroom? So as we start to put this into practice, uh, we're gonna be spending some time in Google Classroom itself. And if you just joined us, um, we do have one, uh, one sort of quirk, which is that the school district that Sarah and I teach for doesn't allow teachers from outside our district to join our district Google Classrooms. So I've got a separate personal domain that I have Google Classroom set up on. The downside is that you won't be able to join our Google Classroom unless you use an individual uh, Gmail account. So in other words, if you have a school, if you have like Google Apps for Education for your school, you won't be able to join our Google Classroom with that account. But if you have a personal Gmail account, you will be able to join with that. If you don't have a personal Gmail account, it's totally okay, because we'll flip back and forth between my screen and Sarah's so you can see the teacher and student perspectives both and follow along that way. Um, so either one of those things is fine. But just to kind of give you a quick alert of that. The, um, the class code, if you do have a personal Gmail account, uh, the class code is up on the screen there, and all you'll do is go to classroom.google.com, make sure that you're signed in with your personal Gmail account, and then go ahead and put in that class code, which Sarah has also put in the chat as well. And so I'm going to do it again in case there are new, any newcomers. And she'll do that again in just a second here. Uh, I am going to click away from this screen just so that I can get going, but you can always find that information, the, that class code in the, um, in the chat. Normally in a classroom, when I'm adding students to my Google Classroom for the first time, I'll have that projected on the screen, and students will just go to classroom.google.com in their web browser and join with that class code. Um, but that should get you going there. And if you have questions, like I said, please put those in the chat. So I talked about that context of, um, of, of thinking about some common tasks that we do as teachers. And that's the way that we're kind of thinking through tonight's session. So there are a lot of things that you might do, whether you teach elementary, middle school, or high school, things like having students introduce themselves, 
uh, maybe having students, uh, students watch a video and have a class discussion where everybody can respond to one another's perspectives and thoughts. Um, maybe watching a video or some other, or getting into some other kind of resource like an article and then reflecting on their learning in some kind of written form. Uh, you might have some resources like websites that you want students to be able to get to at any time. You might want to make some announcements and you probably want to do some formative assessment. So we're going to go through all of those tasks, show how we do those things in Google Classroom. Um, we'll spend some time really digging deep into um, that third one, especially where we have students turn things in and kind of think about what that workflow looks like for you as the teacher, putting an assignment out getting it back, giving feedback, and responding to students and grading things. Um, we will go relatively quickly because we do have only an hour tonight, but then we'll, we'll peel some of those things back and have some time for questions at the end as well. So um, the, uh, oh, I'm gonna jump back out of the presentation now at this point because uh, some of that is stuff to use for a little bit later on. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a second here so I can switch over to uh, our Google Classroom and if you're not able to see that, like I said, we'll, we'll have Sarah's uh, screen pulled up as well so that you can see what it looks like from the student view. So let me flip over and just make sure. Uh, can you just give me a quick thumbs up or put a note in the chat to let me know if you're seeing our Google Classroom that says MSEA Maximizing Google Classroom? Seeing that okay, great. So one quick thing, uh, when you first come into Google Classroom, um, this is a question we actually get pretty often, which is like, can you specify where students land when they first go to Google Classroom? And the answer, unfortunately, at this point is no. So when you or students first go to Google Classroom, you're gonna land on what Google Classroom calls the stream. And if you scroll down in here a little bit, you're gonna see that our stream already has some stuff populated in there. That's because before you came into the course, um, I pushed some assignments and questions and things like that out. That is something that you can change. So if your students are anything like my middle school students, they almost always tend to just go to the stream and look through there to find stuff, which can be good, or sometimes might not give as much organization as you might want from the teacher perspective. So you can actually change that setting per classroom. If I go to the gear up at the top here, one thing I can do is, is choose whether we show those condensed notifications of new assignments in the stream, uh, whether we show the entire thing or whether we hide those notifications altogether. And you as a teacher might wanna think a little bit about if you wanna use announce or the stream just for announcements, or if you wanna have that be the place where they go and find information about their assignments as well. I typically keep my classrooms on the show condensed notifications, but there are some good reasons that you might wanna choose one of those other things there. So what I'm gonna do instead is click over to the classwork tab, uh, which is where I think about our course really kind of being built out. And that first task that we talked about was having students introduce themselves. Now, typically, of course, we would have students do that in person. We might play a game going around the room. But if remote learning has showed us anything, we have to be ready to respond in different ways. So if you're in the Google Classroom, uh, let me click over to people. And it looks like we've got some people in there, which is great. Um, if you're in the Google Classroom, the very first topic that shows up there called introduction has a question on there. And it just says, what's your first name? Uh, what do you teach? And so if you're in the Google Classroom, if you could go and click on that and respond to that question, that would be great. Um, I'm seeing a question in the chat about the code not working, Tracy. Um, like I said, you, you do have to use your individual uh, Gmail account, not a school Gmail account, unfortunately. Um, so if you're not able to do that, um, you'll just be able to follow along with us as we're showing it on our screen. But there's the, there's the code one more time. So I'll give it just a few minutes for people to, um, give just a minute for people to go ahead and respond to that. I'm seeing a class comment. Um, one thing to do, Sarah, do you mind showing your screen real quick? Uh, I'm gonna have you show what this looks like from the student perspective so that you can see uh, where to put your response to that question in. Okay, so if I already did it, can I delete it? Yeah, I think so. So what you should be seeing on Sarah's screen right there, um, there are two things in Google Classroom. There are sort of two ways that you can, um, oops, there are two ways that you can, um, that you can leave responses to a thing. Uh, yeah, if you click on view assignment there. The, um, 
yeah, the class comment is one way to do that, but that's actually leaving a, a comment on the assignment and it's not really responding to the question. So, um, let's see. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, no, it's not showing up correctly. I'm not sure why. Um, oh, you know what? Um, it's because of how I have this set up. Nope, that's just fine, actually. So we're seeing, we're seeing that show up. And Sarah, if you move up to Karen's post there. Uh, yep. Um, no, nope, that's not showing up either. I'm not sure why. We should be seeing a threaded discussion thing happen in there, and it doesn't seem like that's happening. We're actually going to see this again in just a minute here, so this isn't super critical. Um, I'm going to have you stop sharing your screen, and I'll flip back over and start sharing mine again. So on the teacher side of things, what that looks like for me uh, when I'm looking at that is that I can see those class comments if I, if I click on this. And um, if I click view assignment, I can see uh, who has marked that assignment as done from the student side of things. So if you're doing a, an introduction thing, getting credit for responding may not be super important for you, but we'll see a, um, a task where that might be a little bit more important in just a second here. Um, let's see. So I'm going to click back to our main classroom page and go back into the classwork tab. Um, that's sort of like an example of just students introducing themselves. Um, the next thing I'd like you to take a look at is this what is engineering question. And so now we're coming into where we want students to do something. So when I click on that question, um, there's a description that I've written about watching the video, thinking about it, um, and then responding. And this is published in Google Classroom as a question as well. Uh, for myself, when I click on the view question, um, I'll see responses from the teacher side, but I'm going to ask Sarah to go ahead and show her screen so that you can see what it looks like from the student side, and we'll pause right there for one second. So don't go in and try and answer that question yourself. I'm going to have share, uh, Sarah pull up her screen on the student view so we can see that instead. Okay, so I'm going over to classwork, and this is the what is engineering question, yep. and view question. There we go. So up in the top right, you're going to see that Sarah has a box that says your answer, and what I would like you to do is go ahead and type in your answer. The answer, uh, the question is embedded in the directions there. What do you think is the main thing engineers are interested in? Uh, Sarah is going to go ahead and type in her answer, and if you're in our Google Classroom, if you could put in an answer there as well, that gets some stuff in there for us to be able to um, to show what that workflow looks like from the teacher perspective as well. Yep, and then you can click Turn In. And so if you're in the classroom, please go ahead and put in an answer for that as well. You don't have to know anything about engineering. You can make up an answer that sounds good to you, and that's totally fine for tonight. So Sarah, you can stop sharing your screen and I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing mine again so we can see this from the teacher perspective. Do you want me to show the classmate answers first? Um, yeah, actually, yeah, we can go ahead and do that. That would be just fine. So what Sarah's showing is that she's responded to that question, but a couple other people have as well. And so because we want this to be, um, our task for this is to have a class discussion, I've got it set up so that you can respond to one another's um, responses. So Sarah can click reply and she can type in her own response to um, any of those responses that are already in there as well. She can agree, disagree, ask for some evidence um, for a claim that might have been made and so on. <laughs> they are very cool. That's true. That's what people always say about engineers. That they are super cool. Want me to stop sharing now? Can you do yeah, that'd be great. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen again so you can see what it looks like from the teacher side of things. So I'm in 
uh, in classroom here. When I look at this what is engineering question, one thing that's kind of nice from the teacher perspective is that I can see that five people turned in that question. In other words, they answered that question and click turn in. And three people it shows just assigned, which means that we have eight people in our classroom, three of whom haven't responded yet. So if just from the teacher side of things, that's kind of nice. You could use this live in real time in the classroom if you want students to have sort of a back channel discussion, um, or you can use this virtually remotely as well. Um, when I click on view question, I'm gonna see that sort of thread across the side here of all the responses. So I've got um, one response here, and then I can see Sarah's response to that comment. Um, I can jump in myself and uh, respond to a student's uh, response. Great answer. Um, and Karen, I see what you're talking about with the typo in there. Um, and uh, I'm trying to remember if that's a thing you can go back and edit. I'm not sure off the top of my head if you can. I don't, don't think, think you can, unfortunately. That's okay. So from the teacher side of things, that's what that looks like. Um, just turning in an answer to that question as a student does not automatically get you points. Um, I would have to go in and give you points. But what you're doing by clicking turn in is showing me as the teacher, hey, I've responded to this thing. So I could go and give all of you points for your responses. And then I could return that so that you know that you've gotten points. And we'll look at that workflow of getting points and, and grading assignments more in the next thing that we do in just a second here. Uh, let me pause for just one second and, and see if there are questions about the introduction or about the class discussion questions that we've just done. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and put those in the chat. So far, we haven't got any in there. Okay. Cool. If you think of things when we go ahead, um, please put those in there. But again, because we have a relatively short time, I'm going to go ahead and move forward. So another really common thing in classroom is that we use an assignment. Um, and an assignment is a little bit different type of thing in, in classwork. Let me go ahead and click on that and show you uh, one of the differences there. So putting in a question gives students a place to respond and you can set it so that students can respond to each other or not. Um, if you set it to respond to each other, it really works well as a class discussion. Uh, but if you just ask that question, that can be a great sort of lightweight formative um, assessment tool where you're asking one question and getting one response. You can think about it um, in lots of different ways. Um, but an assignment is a little bit different. And this is an example of a really common kind of assignment that I would use. So um, what I'm asking students to do here is to watch this video, and I don't want you to go and do this yourself, but to watch this video, and then to use the attached Google Doc to respond. And so this is something where I've set up a Google Doc ahead of times. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And we just make sure that you can see the Google Doc that just opened. I wanna make sure I'm sharing the whole window and not just that single tab. Did you see me click over to the Google Doc okay? Can you show me a thumbs up if you did? Fantastic, okay. So this Google Doc is basically something that I set up ahead of time for students to respond to. So I wrote this out. Uh, one thing that I did that I think is really useful um, is to have these boxes in here. Um, so that it's really clear where students are responding. Um, because you can put anything in a Google Doc, you can put images in there, you can format it however you choose to. Um, I think putting in that box gives uh, students a little bit more clue about where to put their responses. And then when you go through and you um, assess their work, it's much easier for you typically to see where they've responded compared to the actual questions. Because if you don't do that, students tend to click at the very end of this thing and start typing their answer in, and that can be a little bit difficult sometimes. So basically what students will do, and what I'm gonna ask a few of you to do if you don't mind, is you'll look at that assignment, you'll click on the Google Doc, you'll put in some answers to that, and then you will go ahead and turn that in. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that, share, uh, so that Sarah can share the student perspective screen on that, and, um, and sh you'll be able to see what she's doing even if you can't do it yourself. Share. 
Okay, so I'm in classwork. I'm in the engineering design process topic and I want to respond to the what is engineering assignment. So I clicked on the assignment. I can watch the video and then when I'm ready, I'll click on the document as well. It opens it up and I see the questions and these rectangles are a clue to me as a student to answer those questions there. Um, and <laughs> only goofy answers are coming to my head. I also teach engineering, so um, at the elementary level. Goofy answers um, are fine tonight, that's fine. Uh, apple pie, I don't know, maybe I missed dinner. <laughs> um, my grandpa was a mechanical engineer and my other one was a civil engineer. So we'll put those in there. I don't know if they're in the video or not. Um, I don't know. <laughs> okay, I had a question and maybe you can show this when when we flip back. What if I forget to turn something in on the teacher side, you can turn it in for the student. So um, we're going to go ahead and just show the process of doing this the correct way right now and then we can okay. come back around to that. So Sarah's going to click back over to the classwork tab. She doesn't have to do anything else because Google Doc automatically uh, saves your work. Um, but when you come back to that classwork tab, one thing that you will need to do is to turn it in. So you'll need to click on the view assignment link at the very bottom there. And we know that Sarah's already opened that doc up and put in her answer. So all she has to do now is click turn in. And so if you're following along and you're in the Google Classroom, you can do that as well. Um, but I'm going to have Sarah, uh, Sarah stop sharing her screen and I'm going to share my screen again so you can see what this looks like on the teacher side of things. So from my perspective as the teacher, uh, I'm going to see Sarah's response come in and hopefully I'm going to see a few other ones as well. And what that looks like for me is I can see uh, two people, Sarah being one of them, have turned in this assignment so far. So I can click on the turned in there and it shows me just the two people that have uh, turned this in, and I see that I've got some more folks that are in the class but haven't turned the assignment in yet. They might be working on it, or they might have just not gotten to it yet, and that's okay. So I'm gonna click on Sarah's response, and when I do that, I can click on the actual Google Doc. This is one feature that I use uh, all the time in Google Classroom is to go through and grade a bunch of assignments where there are Google Docs or Google Sheets or things like that. Um, can't see the screen? Uh oh. Hold on a second here. No, let's see. Hold on one second. Do, do, do. All right, can you see my screen okay now? Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that. Um, so what I was saying is once I've, once I've clicked on a response uh, in this view, um, I can click on the actual Google Doc that was turned in and load that in there. And this is a feature I use all the time in Classroom, which is going through and giving some responses to student work. Um, so in our district, we really strive for mastery learning, which means that we're probably not just looking for yes, no, correct, incorrect kind of answers or just giving points and moving on. Um, I really wanna engage in dialogue with my students and give them some feedback so that they can use that to increase their learning or go back and check things they might've missed. So um, I don't know that engineers are mainly interested in apple pie. So this would be a good example of me thinking about how a student might get this answer a little bit better. So I have a few ways that I can give responses and feedback to a student here. One thing that I can do is go in and make a comment in that Google Doc because the way that the um, workflow works for Classroom is that um, for this assignment, I made a copy, I had it make a copy of this Google Doc for every student. So you notice that um, that Sarah's is uh, called Sarah Van Lu at the beginning here. And if you notice when you open yours up, yours has your first and last name at the beginning of that doc because Google Classroom made a copy of that doc for each person when the assignment went out. So I'm able to look at that and, um, and once she's turned it in, I actually have ownership of that document temporarily. So you might've noticed for just that split second when she flipped over to the Google uh, Docs window on her own view that it said you don't have access to edit this anymore. That's because now as the teacher, I now have access to that because she's turned in that assignment. So I can go in and do 
just anything else I might want to do in a Google Doc. But the most important thing at this point is to leave a comment. So in the Google uh, Doc itself, I could leave a comment specifically about this thing. So I've got this highlighted and I'm going to go ahead and type in a comment. I'm not sure that's the thing engineers are most interested in. Take a closer look at one minute, 30 seconds in the video, then revise your answer. So I'm putting this directly in as a comment in the Google Doc. Um, another thing that I can do to leave some feedback is that I can add a private comment. So only the student that turned this in is gonna see that comment. Um, you saw some class comments earlier, but this is different. This is just teacher to student one-to-one. -one. Um, and I'm gonna say, looks good overall but please see my comment on question one. Revise and resubmit. So when I post that question or when I post that private comment, that student will get a notification there um, on their email that, some, that I've left a private comment on their assignment. And um, they, Sarah unfortunately won't be able to do anything with this yet until I click that return button. So I'm going to click return and that's going to show back up. We're going to see her screen from the student perspective in just a second here. Um, but let's take a look in this drop down and see if there are some other people who also turn that in. So this is a, a one way that you can move through assignments is to click on that drop down and it will show you whether students have turned that in or whether it's still just assigned to them. You can also use these back and forth arrows. Um, let's see, cool. Let's, let's pretend that this assignment was all the way filled out and looks great. Um, I can go ahead and give that student 100 points and leave them a private comment. Great job. And they're going to see that um, private comment right away, but they won't see their score that I gave them until I click return. So I'm gonna click return for that student and now they're gonna see that show up. So I'm gonna stop sharing from the teacher side and have Sarah share from the student side so that she can see what that looks like to get that feedback um, on an assignment. Okay, oh, I'm muted. I'm not muted. <laughs> Here I am on the student side and this, I've just been kind of sitting at this screen while Bill's been showing this to you on the other screen, but I watched as he was returning the work that the comment popped right up on my screen. And so students would see that and they get an email too, right? Yeah, so your student will get that notification back from you. And then I can um, click on this and edit it again. And I could change my answer here. And again, once I'm finished, it's keeping track of my work in real time. And then I can go back and turn it in again when, um, when I'm finished. And are, do you want me to actually do that, Bill? Okay. All right. So like I was saying, that's really, um, that's something that I use a lot in my own workflow as a teacher is having students turn a thing in, me kind of evaluating it, giving some feedback on that, and then thinking about um, whether that is good enough, whether they missed something, whether there's something they need to revise, or whether they just did the assignment as, as necessary and, and got the points for that. Um, so that's a, really, that's a really common kind of piece of our workflow here. Uh, Sarah, can you go ahead and stop sharing your screen and I'll start sharing mine again? Cool. So we've seen, uh, we've seen a few things right now so far. We've seen um, using a class question as an introduction. We've seen using a class question as a discussion prompt. And now we've seen a really common version of using an assignment there. Uh, a couple other things that we might do very frequently in Google Classroom is we might want to post some resources for students um, that they can get access to whenever. They might not need it for a specific assignment. There might not be a thing they have to do. But again, because Classroom is kind of our hub for, um, for all of our stuff for our class, this is a nice place to post that. So down here at the bottom, I've got a topic called resources, and these are posted in what Google Classroom calls material. And material can be all kinds of things. It could be a um, it could be a, uh, a website, it could be a Google Doc with uh, directions or information that they might need. Um, right here, I've got a video that I linked to. You can, you can type stuff in there, you can add video links and things like that. Um, 
this is just a link to a website that they might want to go to. Maybe this is like you finished your assignment and this is choice time. So you want to go off to a list of acceptable websites. You could uh, materials and would be a great way to, to put that list out to people. Um, let me pop over to our outline for just one second to make sure that I'm staying on track. This would be a great time if you have questions to put those things into the chat. Cool. So there are basically two, uh, two remaining things that I wanted to show. One is using the stream to make an announcement to your students. Um, this is something that for me personally has really been a lifesaver in some ways because I often, as an elective teacher, I often get announcements about like, make sure that students remember to order yearbooks. And I, I never felt like I had a great place to put that stuff. It's not gonna be an assignment for me. It's not gonna be something I necessarily wanna spend a lot of time talking about in class because I wanna get right into our topic. But um, using the stream to post an announcement like that is kind of perfect. So I could say, for example, I uh, remember yearbook sales end on Friday, so order yours A. And I can put uh, basically the same kinds of things in there that I could put for an assignment, which means I could add a link, maybe your website, uh, maybe your yearbook sales are online, so you can put a link to the site to buy those things. Maybe there's an order form that I've got in Google Docs, so I wanna add that file for your order form and so on and so forth. When I click post, what's gonna happen is that you as students are gonna see that show up in the stream. And in fact, if you're on the stream page, there'll be a little banner that goes across that says the stream is updated. And if you click on that, it'll actually reload it and show you that new information right there on the spot. So that's one way that you can make an announcement in Google Classroom. And again, because you can choose whether to show assignments in the stream or not, um, you might decide that you want to just keep your stream open for those announcements and not have assignments show up there. So students know when they first jump into Google Classroom, because they go onto the stream, it'll just automatically only show those announcements and then they have to click over to Classwork to see their actual assignments and things like that. Um, the one last thing that I would, wanted to show, a uh, really common thing that we might want to do as teachers, of course, is give some kind of formative assessment. So I've got a quick quiz in here. So if you'll go in to the classroom, if you're in there, click on engineering quiz. Um, this is just a Google form. If you would go ahead and click on that, you can take that quiz for me. And it's just a couple of questions. Again, wrong answers are totally fine for tonight. Um, there's a, a multiple choice there. There's one where you can choose um, all that apply and there's a, a short answer question there as well. So I'll give folks just a minute or two um, to do that. While people are doing that, do you want me to mention the chat to you? Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take just a quick look at the chat while people are responding to that quiz. Yep. Okay, and those are those are things that I will be happy to talk about once we get done looking at this last task. We'll we'll take those questions and then any other ones that come up in just a second here. Great. Judith, do you have a personal Google account? If you have a personal Google account, will you join our course using that? Um, the issue is that we can't share outside of our domain at, with. Um, Google using our, basically people with school email uh, Google accounts can't join our Google class because we were not able to use our, our school district Google for, for this session. It's unfortunate and a little confusing, but that's just kind of where we're at, unfortunately. Yeah, and also that's why we're switching over and showing the student side from my computer as well. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm sorry, I know, I know it's a little inconvenient. Yeah. So on the teacher side of things, I wanted to take a second and actually, Sarah, you're gonna show this piece, aren't you? About uh, grading the quiz, right? Yes. Yeah, so Sarah has uh, got two accounts. She's gonna switch over to her teacher account. Um, Uh, while she's doing that, one thing I'm going to show you, uh, just because we're talking about that for a second, is that you can uh, click on the People tab in Google Classroom, um, and you can actually have multiple people in as the same teacher or as the teacher for the same course. This is a feature I actually use more than I would expect to, um, especially for students who are on caseload. Um, if I've got a teacher consultant or um, 
another person who is working with that student. Um, adding them as a co-teacher doesn't really give them anything they have to do, but it allows them to really easily be in the loop, so to speak, on all the assignments that that student that might be on their caseload is working through. Um, if I'm co-teaching with another teacher, uh, this can be a great thing. We did this a lot during our distance learning time. And then of course I can also see all the students here. So Sarah's in as a teacher. I'm gonna stop sharing so that she can share her screen and show what it looks like to grade one of those quizzes um, like we just did for the engineering quiz there. Okay. Unmute. Okay, so I, I am in. <laughs> Can you hear me? I'm struggling with this mute unmute thing tonight. Uh, okay, I, I am signed into Google Classroom as Bill's co teacher and the what is engineering quiz right here. Um, from this perspective, I can click on it here. And when I do that, I can click on the pencil so that I can see the responses and I can, okay, I got it. I can click on the responses and you can look at this a couple of different ways. So I can see this information up, uh, in a summary format, but what I'm interested in in particular, also I wanna point out that you can look at an individual student's responses, but I wanna look at the questions because I know that my um, form is automatically grading question number one and question number two. However, question number three requires me to go in and look at those answers because that's a short answer response and they're ungraded. So if I look here and I say, um, I learned that there are different types of engineers, I can mark that correct. And it's nice, it's not even showing me student names. So I can, um, <laughs> I learned what how little I learned. So I can mark those correct. Um, Apple is the best pie. Um, but that wasn't in the video, so I'll mark that one incorrect. And then, um, so I can just basically go through and one at a time, I can continue marking these correct or incorrect. And when I'm finished, I can save that and it automatically updates the student's responses or rather the, the student's grades on that Google form. And then I am, basically that's it. So it's now saved my responses and I can keep moving on. You want me to stop sharing again, Bill? Okay. At this point, we've gone through the, the main sort of six tasks that we wanted to, to work through in Google Classroom for tonight. Um, because we only have an hour, we could go very deep into all of those. You know, we could, we could spend a, a 10 hours easily going through all of the things that you can do in Google Classroom, but we thought that was kind of a useful way to look at it. Um, I did see that there were some questions from the chat though, so I wanna come back to those for just a minute and then um, touch on maybe one or two other topics that I think are really important, and then we're happy to stay for a little bit after our session officially ends for tonight if there are more questions. So um, let's see. So um, John is asking about using Google Classroom with primary students. Is there a way for students to see comments and grades when assignments are returned? So this is one weak point of Google Classroom. Uh, Classroom has what it calls guardian summaries. So if we were in with our school accounts, we could show you that, but because it's on a private account, we, we can't really do that. Um, but a guardian summary basically means that a parent has signed up to be, a, to be linked to their student's account and they will see a guardian summary, which is basically just an email. If you've set due dates for your assignments, parents will see if an assignment is, is uh, late or missing, for example. Um, but unfortunately, parents don't have a way to see grades or comments directly from Google Classroom. There's no way to, to really do that, unfortunately. And as a parent of a, uh, two high schoolers, one who've, whom just graduated, we've found that frustrating at times, um, but that is a limitation of Google Classroom. Um, can you copy courses if you teach multiple sections, Karen asks. Yes, you absolutely can, and that's one of my very favorite things about Classroom. So for example, when I was setting up um, all of the template classes for our engineering teachers for middle school in our district. That's something that I did. I made a classroom and then we actually were able to just make copies of that classroom. So I'll show you how to do that actually. Um, I'm in Google Classroom. Can you see my screen okay here? Am I sharing? 
Okay, so I'm gonna click on the three lines menu at the top here and I'm gonna to go to classes. So as a teacher here now, we've presented this a couple of times for a few different EAs. And so we've got two of those, one from PSEA and one for tonight. If I wanted to make a copy of this classroom, I can literally just click on the three dots and click copy. It will make a copy of all the assignments, all of the announcements, all of everything, basically everything except for student work and people. So what that means is, let's say that I teach a third hour engineering class and a fifth hour engineering class. Um, I can go ahead and set up one classroom and if you're one of those people who works ahead and you plan a bunch of stuff out, you plan a couple of units of instruction and you wanna have that ready for both of those things, you can build that out in one and then make a copy of that and it will copy it into that second one as well. Those two aren't linked then, but another thing that you can do that's a really powerful feature of Classroom that again I use all the time is this idea of reusing things. So in Google Classroom, if I've made an announcement in my first hour class and I wanna make that same exact announcement in my third and fourth and fifth hour classes, on the stream here, I can click this little, this little button to the side here, which looks like a reload one, um, and that's to reuse something. So I can click on this, I can click reuse, and it'll give me the ability to edit that and to customize it, and I can customize that for tonight's session, and then click post. Um, I can do that exact same thing with assignments in the classwork tab. So if I go up to the top, we didn't really touch much on creating things because of our time limitations. But in addition to creating assignments and quizzes and things like that from scratch, another thing I can do is reuse a post. So I could go back in here and I could say, well, you know what? I really liked that uh, what is engineering assignment, but I'm gonna make a, uh, I'm gonna make a uh, what is technology assignment. And maybe I want to get rid of that first YouTube video and I want to grab a different video from YouTube and so on. And once I'm comfortable with that, I can click assign. And so it does mo it takes most of the work out of making that new assignment if it's very similar to another one there. So will you show how you attach a document and enable it to make a copy for every student? Yeah, give me, let's see, give me one sec. Okay, so I'm gonna knock off a couple of really quick ones here in the chat. Um, so organizing content in Google Classroom is something that often comes up. Classroom has uh, what it calls topics. We might think about as units of instruction or, um, or weeks. We've done that both ways. During distance learning, we did a, a topic per week. So it was very easy for students and families to just see as we're going through our continuity of learning plan which week they're on. In, in the classroom, I would tend to probably organize that more as units of instruction. But in classroom, in the classwork tab, when I click the create button there, uh, the option at the very bottom is called topic. So I could say, uh, let's call this uh, 3D design as a, as a new topic. Um, it won't show assignments or it won't show topics that don't have a published post. So because uh, I don't have anything in that topic yet that's published for students. They won't see that there. So you can use that as a way to kind of outline and start to get your course built out before you have everything in there. You can make all the topics that you want. And if I click and hold on this, I can drag it around as well. And that shows that reorganization, not just in my view, but on the student's view as well. Um, let's see, do you add your roster to enable individual copies of docs for learners? So, um, Whoever is, a, whoever is in the Google Classroom as a student, it will automatically make a copy of that assignment for everyone. Um, but one quick thing I did wanna to mention to, you, uh, to all of you about this is, let's say that I've got a couple of uh, students who are really advanced and they need an extension activity. They've finished fast and they need something else to do or they're particularly interested in this topic. When I create an assignment, um, I might call this extension activity one. Um, instead of by default assigning it to everybody, I can actually click on this menu next to it. I can uncheck all students and I can assign this just to those couple of people who are really ready for it. So that's a really nice way to do some differentiation in there. But yeah, by default, it just automatically makes a copy for every student. Um, let me make sure there was a question about a student view option. That is again one real downside is that there's no way uh, you mentioned Schoology, I think, Karen. There's no way to do that sort of flip flop between the teacher view and student view in Google Classroom. That's another really weak point, unfortunately. Um, is there is the only way to see student responses to open up each assignment every day? Um, the only way to see each student response is to open it up, but um, 
I, I'll talk about this. This isn't like a classroom specific thing, but for myself, what I've what I found really works well for me is that I actually have two days per week where I grade things. Setting that expectation kind of helps me and it helps students and families as well know, oh, if I turn an assignment in on Monday, by Wednesday night, Mr. Van will have it graded and feedback given and put into PowerSchool and all that stuff. Um, I, th I think that answers your question. If it doesn't, please, by all means, put a oh, clarifying question in there. Tab? Yeah, uh, let's click on there and let's take a quick look at the grades tab there as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So these are the assignments that we've made for the Google Classroom, pardon me, so far. Um, and I can see each of those assignments, the question, the, uh, the what is engineering question here that I gave some feedback on and so on and so forth. So at a quick glance, I can see a really nice like grade book matrix of who's turned things in and whether they've gotten points or not. Um, if I wanted to see just what a single student has done in my classroom, I do this a lot during mini conferences. I'll call students up one at a time and we'll just quickly look at their specific list of assignments. If I click on people, I can go down and find Sarah's list in there and it'll show me here's a list of all of her assignments, whether she's turned those things in or not and whether she's gotten points for those things. And that's a really nice way to have that discussion with students. Uh, there's a question from Judith about rubrics. Uh, rubrics at this point, if I remember correctly, are not an official Google Classroom feature, but there is a beta. It's a little weird because it's been in beta for like a year. I actually got signed up for this beta like a year ago. Um, there's uh, there's a, a link to a form to request access to their rubrics beta. And um, I'm not sure why that hasn't rolled out all the way. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna dive into that because it's a little thorny like to, to go into it and it's not available for everybody. Uh, can you insert a Google Doc inside of a slide presentation? Um, you could definitely insert a link to a Google Doc in a slide presentation, like, um, but I would probably, if I wanted both of those things to be part of an assignment, I would probably add those as separate things myself. So for example, if I'm creating an assignment, um, actually here, let's, let's do this. I've got a part two assignment that we didn't look at at all. So there's a, uh, this one you didn't see if you were in the student view of the Google Classroom because I've left this as a draft. That's a tool that I use all the time as a teacher is that I'll make an assignment, but I'll save it instead of publishing it so that I've got access to it to still tweak it and whatever. And so that students don't see it showing right up away, uh, showing up right away. When, as a teacher though, when I click on this, I can edit this assignment and I've got a bunch of options here. So this is an assignment that has both a slides and a Google Doc in here. So there's a, um, there's a set of questions in here in the Google Doc, but then there's also a presentation template that I made. Oh. And one thing that I would wanna do before I push this out to students is change this to make a copy for each student. If I didn't, students would be able to see that doc or that slides presentation, but they wouldn't be able to edit it themselves without making a copy, but Classroom will do that for them automatically. Yeah. yeah. Quick note on the time at 6.30, we should probably- Oh, it we is. Stay on, but yeah. we should point out the survey and slide 28. Yeah, yep. So um, we are gonna go ahead and jump back over to, where's my sharing option? There we go. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump back over to our presentation for a second, because unfortunately we are right at 6.30, but we are happy to stay on for a little while after that. Uh, we're gonna, uh, one thing before I flip to the very end there is all of those tasks that we went through tonight, um, I, uh, I didn't go to those right away because I wanted to walk you through those, but those are all, uh, I've made sort of a little cheat sheet in those couple of slides there. Like this is the thing you wanna do. And so here's how you do it. You would go into classwork and put it in as a question. If I wanted to have students uh, watch a video and reflect, I could do that in classwork assignments and so on. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and flip over to the very end. Uh, Geraldine, is this where you needed us to be? The exit ticket? Yes. Okay. Thank you again. As I told you, you would be in great hands with um, Bill and Sarah um, this evening. So hopefully, again, you got some great tools. And as you can see, they left you with additional slides with resources that you can click on to, um, again, go in, peruse, and kind of play around and improve your skill set and enhance it to support your students. But the most important thing we want you to do is to complete that exit ticket. Just like a great teacher, we want to get feedback from you so we know how to um, 
use the resources to support you better and meet your needs. So we're asking you to complete this Google form. Again, very important that you do that. Again, um, we will put it on the chat box. Again, the chat box, you cannot click directly on that link when it's on there. You'll have to copy it and paste it into your browser. But again, um, that is the exit ticket we will let you to complete right now. Great. And um, because that's going to show up in the, in the chat box in just one second, I'm going to click back because there are a couple of things that I want to just make sure that you see. Or Geraldine, do you need to talk about this? Yes, I do. Okay, go right ahead. Okay. Um, we have three following series that are going to occur. Um, we call them session one, two, and three. They are not prerequisites for each other, so you can att um, attend whichever one meets your need. Again, it's next week again, June 24th. You will be receiving a new registration link. So if you register for this, we apologize, but we're going to ask you to re-register because it looks like you guys are liking the meeting format versus the webinar style. So we're going to ask you to re-register for that session. Um, you'll get information following um, our session by the end of this week. So please look out for that. Next slide. That second link, um, if you can go ahead and click it. Uh, do you want the link, did you say? The second one, if you can go ahead and click it. Thank you. Yep. This will take you to the MSEA page. As you see, it shows you upcoming webinars. And if you scroll down, it will um, push you down to the ones that are archived. So keep scrolling. And you'll see all the ones that we previously held. And following the summary of these presentations, you will see how to access any of the webinar materials or link if you miss any of our sessions. So again, this is how you'll be able to access any of the things that we've done so far. You can go back to your PowerPoint. Um, as um, I transition you back to Bill there, um, this, they will gladly say they will take a few more questions. We wanna thank them again for the wonderful presentation to add a little bit more to your Google Classroom Toolkit. So again, thank you again for um, presenting for us this evening, um, Bill and Sarah. Again, part of the MSCA's mission is to support your professional development and give you tools to support your students. So again, this is a member benefit to you. We thank you for being an MSCA member. You have Bill and Sarah's contact information and I'll let them wrap up our session. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. We're so happy to have uh, been able to be here and be a resource for other educators. We're both proud union members here in Michigan, so we're happy to be able to support other folks across the country working hard for students every day. So we've got our contact information there as the very last slide here in our presentation. Uh, we're both pretty active on Twitter and other things as well. Um, there were a couple of quick things I wanted to point out uh, in here that um, that we wanted to put in there because we only had an hour. There's obviously a ton of additional stuff we could have gone through. Um, in Michigan, John Sowash is one of our Google experts. He runs the Michigan Google Conference, and he has a really comprehensive set of videos on his YouTube channel about using Google Classroom. So if there's a topic that we just sort of touched on tonight that you want to dive deeper into, his videos are a really great resource to go and find out more about a specific topic, to spend five or ten minutes learning more about how to do something in assignments or with a rubric or things like that. Um, I made a playlist of what I think of as kind of his essential Google Classroom videos to like really kind of take your stuff to the next level um, but his whole YouTube channel is great and he's an expert on all things Google so if you've got a slides or sheets or whatever kind of question um, he's great if you're running into issues like we've had some people throw out some really strange things where we couldn't answer those questions there's some Google classroom support that's available through Google there's a, a help section that they've made and there's also a community where you can ask questions and then finally, we know that oftentimes forms gets a lot of questions as people are using those for quizzes and surveys and things like that. So Sarah's organized some uh, information that's more specifically about Google Forms um, on this page in the slideshow as well. So um, let's see. Bill, if you go back to the survey, there were some specific questions about Google Classroom that got us started. Go back to the survey. Oh, yeah, go back to the survey. Yeah, for sure. And Give me just one second. Really quickly, I'm going to address a question that somebody asked about kindergarten. If you're posting something like a book uh, read aloud, um, 
it, the question was whether to post it as an assignment or a material from the technology usage perspective i would pro i would personally probably post it as a material but i think that you could really do it either way and i wonder if bill might have a different opinion but um, the technology that I've used a lot with my little littles is Seesaw, which is also a free tool. And um, I tend to post things like that as an announcement for my students so that they can get back to it more than once. So I, I don't know if that helps, but hopefully, hopefully it does. All right, so I'm looking at the, let's see, working with students one-on-one -on -one, sharing my screen with them. Hmm. Okay, I'm just trying to look back through the survey to see if there are other questions, but if you have uh, questions that have come to mind as you're, as you're watching tonight, please, by all means, put them in the chat. Uh, Sarah, you can speak to, there was a question about what is Seesaw? Oh, yes. Okay, Seesaw is a, it's a free tool. You can get it um, at app.seesaw.me and it is one that, um, it's very stripped down compared even to Google Classroom and you can post student work, you can send um, activities to your students to do or you can make an announcement or announcements and if you um thank you bill if you uh you seesaw with your students the thing that's really cool um from the lower elementary perspective is that there's not a lot for them to look at so it's easier for young students to navigate and there are built-in drawing tools there's um, there was a question in the google classroom presentation about universal design for learning seesaw has some really awesome built-in things like being able to um, record your instructions for students and they can uh, record responses back verbally so in addition to being able to write and draw they can use a microphone so it, it lets them work in a lot of different like modes so that it, it makes it really accessible for students and it has really great parent communication if you depending on the settings in seesaw parents can see everything that their student does where google classroom does have a nice um, summary depending on again that's a, a thing that we've noticed that if certain teachers have their settings different in google classroom we see more or less on the parent side but seesaw is just it's um it's a really friendly format for students and if you're interested in seesaw I would encourage you to check out their free PD. Um, they have a site called PD in your PJs and I'll post a link there too. I don't wanna overwhelm you with too much here in our Google Classroom chat, but and if you, particularly if you teach K through two, I think you might really like Seesaw. The great thing, um, Sarah and Bill, we have a session that, for them. So if you look again and you can go register for that session, we'll, we'll have one July 1st. So again, um, that link that we shared with all the upcoming workshops, if you are interested in diving into Seesaw, you can join us on July 1st. So right. yeah. that. perfect. I think and you'll if, love it. And if you are already registered, we will be sending a new link just so that we can change platforms to make it more interactive for you. Well, and uh, I'm noticing in the chat, Tracy, thank you for reminding me about your question about turning in an assignment for the student. That's not quite how it works, but it accomplishes the same thing. Let me go ahead and share my screen for a second and show you what I mean. Um, so on the teacher view, if I go into an assignment, um, this happens all the time with my middle schoolers, especially my sixth graders who are like just getting their heads around this whole thing. They'll do the thing and then they forget to actually click turn in. So, um, so they're like, I did the assignment and it still just shows a sign instead of turned in. One thing that's really nice in the what is in, in, in the assignment view in classroom, uh, if I click view assignment on the teacher side of things, I can see everybody who is who has specifically gone in and submitted turned in that assignment, but I can actually see everybody as well here. Um, and because it's made a copy of the assignment for everyone, um, even if they didn't turn it in, I can still click in there and see what they've put in there, right? So maybe they filled everything out and they just forgot to click turn in. 
uh, like Dominique did here, this looks great. I can still go ahead and give them, I can give them a score and I can give them a feedback, looks great. And they don't ever have to have clicked that turn in. I can still go in and see their work and, and give them credit for that and respond to that as well. Um, yeah. Uh, Tracy, hope that answered your question. If it didn't, just let me know in the chat and I'll be happy to, uh, to come back around to that some more. Um, any other questions that people have that are still hanging out? We're happy to stay for a little bit here. Yeah, to, the, it felt like the time went by in about five minutes for us too. That could have been the giant cup of coffee that I had right before we started <laughs> this. But. Yep. No, um, that's the that's the easiest uh, that's the easiest way that I know of there, Tracy, to do that. Um, and again, this is this is something where I, my middle schoolers do this all the time. Uh, but one thing that's this is also really one thing that I love Google Classroom for. Um, and I don't get paid by Google. I should figure out if I can. But now, one thing <laughs> I really love is. Uh, it, you know, it kind of ends that debate of like, I did the assignment, Mr. Van Leeu, and you go. That's great. Now all you have to do is click turn in. Um, I use this in my engineering classes a lot with like our webcams or if, you, if, they're, if we're using iPads with, with classrooms, even if they're doing something in a notebook, like they're doing an engineering drawing or they're writing a response or they're making a thing, the thing they actually turn in instead of handing me a physical notebook or artifact or whatever it is, is typically three photos of their thing that they attach to their assignment in Google Classroom. And if you don't attach those photos and turn that assignment in through Google Classroom, you didn't turn in the assignment. And it just kind of ends that debate. So one thing that we didn't really get to that's, that's really nice in Google Classroom as far as the assignments view is um, I can go in there and um, if it's a Google Doc, I can, I can see what the, what the history is. Like I can see, and actually I can see this for any kind of assignment, I can see when it was turned in exactly. Like the debate is about like, I turned it in, yes, you, no, you didn't, yes, I did. Like that debate is gone. Like it's all time stamped and it's right there. You know, if it's like I did the thing in my notebook and I meant to turn it in, like that's a different conversation we can have. Like no problem, take a photo of it, put it in classroom, you're done, no problem, you got it. But it just really, it gets around so much of that issue of like, I turned the thing in or like I misplaced the paper or like I swear I put it on your desk or like all that's just gone. Obviously, all of this, you know, implies um, that you have access to technology in your classroom. Um, we're really lucky to have good access to technology in our classrooms. Um, so that is a really fundamental assumption that's sort of built into that. But again, with the world that we're living in right now with doing distance learning and hybrid courses and all that stuff, that, that's an assumption that we kind of have to make in some ways. Um, and even if you have a class set of Chromebooks or iPads or whatever, students can share them. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'm just scrolling back through to make sure if there are questions. Slideshow uh, is available right now. Uh, Sarah, do you mind putting the link? Yeah, we, there's just a bit.ly link to the slideshow that we used tonight. And so we'll put that in the chat. And that's got links to all those different resources to the sort of cheat sheet slides that I made with uh, different things to use for different tasks, as well as links to John Sowash's Google Classroom videos on YouTube and all that good stuff. Cool, cool, cool. Any other questions before we call it a night? Is there anything else you would address as far as universal design for learning? Uh, other questions as far as universal design for learning? Like that was a question yeah. in the initial survey. Yeah. Um, is the person who asked that question still here? Because I would love to get more input about what specific things. I can, I can think of a few off the top of my head, but I want to make sure I'm addressing the question well. If that was you, do you mind unmuting or putting it in the chat? Hi, yes. Um, I had a question. I, like um, For students who are just learning English and are mm -hmm. just trying to navigate, um, you know, using using a laptop, because I teach um, four-year-olds, four and five-year-olds. Oh, and so okay. just making sure that they, okay, so basically let's say I've um, clicked an assignment. I'm sorry, I've created an assignment where the students have to drop and drag pictures to complete a sentence. 
I -hmm. think that they're having trouble just understanding what I'm asking them to do. And I want to make sure that I'm using, like, are there visual cues that I could leave for the students to direct them, like how to actually select the picture, drop it and drag it to complete a sentence, um, just to make sure I'm providing the most structure that I can for them as they're learning English. Gotcha. I think Sarah's got a good answer for you. Okay, thank you. Is using Google Classroom a requirement of your district or your school? Or is no. that a, t I would really highly encourage you to look at Seesaw. <laughs> now, I love Google yeah. Classroom for our old, like third grade and up, I think it's great. Um, Pre-K through two, I highly encourage you to look at Seesaw. Um, Seesaw has, it, it. the interface is a lot easier for our youngest students to use. And it also translates. Um, so if you write an assignment, if you put in instructions, if you send an announcement to families, it automatically translates to the student's home computer language. That is not what I meant to say. The home language setting on the student's computer. Okay. okay. So we teach in a university town. We have students from literally hundreds of countries that are at the University of Michigan in our district. Um, and their children come to our schools and so university towns tend to be very um, very diverse and I have a pocket of Hispanic students and Spanish speakers from all over the world in one school and then students that a lot of students speak Arabic um, in another school and and that's just two of a hundred languages and Seesaw will translate um, for you so you don't have to do anything. You write your instructions in English. When your student opens that up at home, it translates to their home language, which can make it a lot, a lot easier. Oh yes, I see Judith is looking at talk, the Seesaw webinar. Um, Google Classroom and Seesaw actually can be used together also if, if you decide that you want to use Google Classroom, but I really would encourage you to check out Seesaw for your four-year-olds and five-year-olds and because of the okay, translation. You. You're welcome. Yeah, I would agree. That's a, it's definitely a more developmentally appropriate tool, especially for your context, I think. I think that'd be a really good tool. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, we are at that time and I want to um, thank you again, for um, Bill and Sarah, for helping us navigate through this wonderful presentation. And as I mentioned before, MSCA's mission is to empower you to make a positive difference in your professional life so that you can elevate the quality of public education for all students. So we hope you have found this session very useful. As I mentioned, all our webinars will be hosted on our website for registration information, as well as to access the resources and um, links if you miss the bitlet. But you have access to the slide deck right now that you can peruse on your own. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. Please look out for new information for registration for the next three up in, upcoming webinars. And yes, Seesaw is one of them. So for the ones who mentioned that um, is of interest, we hope you will register that. Thanks again. Awesome. And Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Oh, there's a raised hand. I don't know if that's a